morning friends it gives me immense pleasure to be here for my favorite course flight mechanics this course belongs to the fourth semester aeronautical students of institute of aeronautical engineering hyderabad india today i am going to take another accelerated flight that is the vertical maneuver performance of the aircraft I am Dr. Vaidhu Duvedi, Professor from Institute of Aeronautical Engineering, Hyderabad, India. Today is my overview of the lectures are vertical maneuver performance, pull up and the pull out basics, effect of load factors on the aircraft, pull up and the pull out problem. One problem I am going to solve. Pull down maneuvers. zero gravity and orbital flight free fall cruise this i am going to discuss so before i start my actual lecture i will just give the brief about my previous lectures before this lecture i have attempted the turn flight in the turn flight i have discussed about maximum of the maximum load factor n max max corner velocity this is a velocity which falling on the zone of aerodynamics and the thrust if the velocity is less than this it will go for the stall zone and if it is more than that there the engine or the structural issues will be more dominant we have also seen the before that climb performance in that rate of climb time of the climb maximum velocity for the maximum range endurance and all these all things i have covered we have also seen in the previous that how the banking is done and how the if the banking is done your load factor is increased this load factor need additional thrust which engine has to generate so if we have seen that the for the steady level flight l is equal to w t is equal to d but here this drag is more for the maneuvering flight t is not is equal to drag but t is more than the drag then only aircraft will be sustained so i will go for my next topic that is vertical maneuver in level turn only two rotations are considered that is roll and the yaw so if you want to in the same level your aircraft is flying so either you can roll in the same level you can roll like this or you can yaw like this two only rotations are possible in the level turn there are another maneuver that are not based on the roll or the yaw and depend upon the pitch motion so if in the previous we have discussed the turning level turn steady coordinated turn once we talk about the steady coordinated turn your aircraft will turn in the same altitude will not increase either it will roll and fly like this or it will turn like this and it will fly but the altitude will remain same that is the level turn level coordinated turn the vertical distance we are not varying only pitching will not happen only roll and yaw will happen that is called the coordinated turn but always aircraft will not be in the coordinated turn it may go up also that is only possible based on the pitching motion when we talk about the pitching motion so what is the pitching motion just i will discuss this also we have the pitching rolling and yawing okay i will discuss this so if this is the aircraft
This is the wing, this is the tail, this is the your X, X1 axis, this is the CG, this is the Y, this is the Y1, this is the Z, this is the Z1. Okay, so first I am talking about the pitching. Pitching is different, pitching is the motion when the nose goes up or down with respect with respect to y y1 axis that is called the lateral axis so the rotation with respect to the lateral axis or y y axis y y1 axis is called the pitching what is the rolling rolling is the motion with respect to the x x1 or longitudinal longitudinal axis respect x x1 with respect to the longitudinal axis in this one wing will go down and another wing will go up this is the rolling yawing it happens with respect to z z1 axis that is called yaw axis in this nose moves left or right in the same x y plane no change of plane is happening so this is the your pitching so just i am going to discuss further here the level turn only has the two rotation that is roll and yaw there are another maneuver that are not based on the roll and yaw and depend upon the pitch motion. I have just now discussed about roll, yaw and the pitch motion and it is I think very much clear that pitch means nose will go up and down. Yaw means nose will go left or right. Roll means wing will go down left or the up. Left or the right wing going up and down. So the pull up, pull down or push over, pull up or pull down pull up is like this going and it is pulling up in the vertical plane pull down means going down like this so dive and pull out from steep dive fall in this group so these are the few motions which are pull up pull down dive pull out from steep dive fall in this group dive is extreme nose down vertical altitude with increased speed and the descent so if a aircraft is flying like this and it is pulling like making down it is called the vertically down 90 degree it is called the dive and dive is the extreme nose down altitude with attitude with increased speed and descent rate so speed will also increase descent rate is also increase for in the dive case when the aircraft is on the lower half of the loop the maneuver is called the pull up so if this is the so it is the half so if it it start from this side this side this side this side this side this side lower half it is called the pull up lower half so up to here from here to here it is the pull up and this is the pull up and I will make some another and this zone is pull down pull down this is also called push over so this is the meaning of this
So when the aircraft is on the lower ha half of the loop, the maneuver is called the pull up. When the aircraft is on the upper half of the loop, the maneuver is called the pull down. In pull down, lift is greater than the weight, but in in the pull up, lift is greater than the weight, but in the pull down, the lift is less than the weight. Pull down aircraft is in inverted flight situation. In this climb angle, gamma is varying constantly. In this uh, climb angle, this will vary always. So now we will discuss about pull up and the pull out basics. So here we have some diagram here. So pull up and the pull down maneuvers we will be discussing. Here is the figure here. So from here, this it is a pull down. A aircraft is inverted here. Lift is in this direction, and from here it is pull up. This is the pull up, and from here it is a pull down. So in turn, no force other than human weight is felt. While in vertical maneuver, a centripetal acceleration is felt. In extreme case, human to pass out. So, if you are turning, only human weight is felt, but if you are making the maneuvering, the centripetal acceleration is also felt in extreme case. Hence, a vertical maneuver is limited to human strength, not aircraft structures. So, we have seen the VN diagram in the turning flight, but we will not have in this because in this only human factor is very important, not the structural problem. A structure can sustain load factor up to 2 to 30, but human can only sustain up to maximum of 6. Variation of load factor with respect to the pitch rate of a transport aircraft, it is shown here. So, this you can see here that if you are take off, here is the climb, you will have 1G, if you are diving, you have the minus, if you are the climbing, it will have the plus. Effect of the load factor, we will see what are the effect of the load factor. When load factor N is higher than 1, the blood pressure will increase and the blood will be moving away, that is upward or downwards. This is referred to as a hydrostatic blood pressure effect. So, if your aircraft is going up, your blood will go down. If you are coming down or nose dive, your blood will go up. So, this type of phenomena is called the hydrostatic blood pressure effect. In an extreme case, the blood will be pumped up in the brain by the G load. The fighter pilots wear a specific suit called the G suit to limit the undesired blood circulation in the brain upward motion. The strength of a human pilot can be artificially increased by wearing a G suit to reduce the damaging effect of the high internal blood pressure. So if you see the fighter pilot, their G value will go very high. In this type of situation, pilot will wear a suit which is called the G suit, which is limiting the undesired blood circulation in the brain, that is upward motion. The strength of the human pilot can be artificially increased by wearing a G suit to reduce the damaging effect of the high internal blood pressure. The higher the load factor, the higher is the blood pressure in the brain area, including eyes and the ear region. A high Load factor may cause the blood pressure to puncture the ear diaphragm and outer layer of the eye and to lose the consciousness. So these are the very basic effect that your ear drum may be bursting, your outer layer of the eyes may be bursting and also you may become unconscious if the load factor is very high. A load factor beyond 9 is very dangerous to eyes, ears and the brain. So, if the load factor is 9 and above, 
it is very dangerous we you cannot go without suit pilot has to wear the suit especially during ejection if your aircraft is in problem and you want to eject the fighter aircraft that time also g factor goes very high and you may become unconscious so your suit is very important for the any fighter aircraft now we will have some derivation for pull up and the pull out maneuvers and we will see how we can proceed ahead and we can find out the uh, this radius of this what is the radius and other things so here five forces are present in this maneuver first is the weight then lift then thrust then drag and then centrifugal force fc mv square by r the equilibrium of the forces along x and the z direction axis are if you see fx in x direction is only the thrust and the drag t is equal to drag in the z direction that is the upward is your lift and the weight so l minus w cos gamma is equal to mv square by r here we consider the aircraft is in the lowest point of the loop that at the bottom if you see your uh, aircraft is here and it is moving like this so in this case l here is the w and here is the l so l minus w is will be mv square by r instantaneous turn radius so this r we can write that this r is equal to m v square by l minus w for m we can write w by g v square by l minus w so v square by g this w we can write l by w minus 1 this l by w we know that it is n so we know that l w by l by w is equal to n load factor so putting this in equation in this r is equal to v square by g n minus 1 so we got here radius of this turn this is the radius here this is the radius this is the lift and this is the weight so we can see here that r is equal to v square by g n minus 1 the minimum radius in a pull out is determined when the pilot applies the maximum allowable load factor so the minimum radius will be when you have the maximum n so r minimum is equal to v square by g n maximum minus 1 so if you want a minimum radius means turn radius like this or like this or like this as you have the minimum radius your n maximum should be maximum your load factor should be maximum then only you will get the minimum turn radius for every aircraft the aircraft performance once we talk uh, if you see your bike or the car they will also give what is the minimum turn that is one of the big performance parameter for any of the vehicle same way for aircraft also r minimum the radius of minimum in which your aircraft will be turning is the very important parameter and here r minimum is equal to v square by g n max minus 1 where n maximum is equal to l by w maximum okay so l by d maximum is w is minimum you will get l by d l by d, w maximum so it is very important so here we can we can see here that pulling out from a dive if this you can see here this is the omega and your aircraft is going for the dive and all of a sudden it is pulling out from a dive and with the radius r and this is the velocity ready uh, rotational velocity is omega and ideal pull out of a die is performed by gliding that is zero thrust at constant speed along a circular arc until the glide path is horizontal so this glide path here it becomes horizontal that is called the pull out from the dive 
all other equations can be used for analysis of this problems now we will discuss the load factor in pull up and the pull out is obtained as follows so this n is equal to v square by rg plus 1 and the angular velocity is defined as the linear speed linear speed v divided by the r v by r so the instantaneous turn rate is obtained omega is equal to v by r so v by r we know that v square by g n minus 1 so this v and v is cancelled so this has gone up so here you will get g n minus 1 divided by v so this omega is equal to g n minus 1 divided by v so this is the instantaneous angular velocity of this aircraft to increase the maneuverability of an aircraft a pull up in a pull up the turn rate should be increased so omega should be increased and the turn radius should be decreased this objective requires a low speed and a high load factor so to increase the maneuverability if you want to increase that your aircraft should be high maneuver so in a pull up the turn rate should be increased so omega should be increased and the turn radius should be decreased so to decrease this omega radius should be decreased this is increasing and radius should be decreasing and the turn radius should be decreased these objectives requires a low speed and a high load factor so for that speed should be low speed low and n high these are the few criteria which we have to maintain so now we will see that best pull up will be achieved while flying with the stall speed so the maximum load factor and the corresponding engine thrust for pull up the corner velocity is defined as v 2 n max w by rho s cl max under root this we have already seen the maximum turn radius and the maximum turn rate in a pull up can be obtained by r minimum is equal to v star or v corner velocity whole square divided by g n max minus 1 and omega max this is the rate of turn is equal to g n max minus 1 by v so we can find out the acceleration ac is equal to v square by v g n minus 1 so it is called the uh, centripetal acceleration so this 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 is cancelled so you will get g n minus 1 so ac that is the centripetal acceleration is equal to g n minus 1 so this is the equation for corner velocity acceleration r minimum omega minimum this equations we have derived now we will do one small problem then we will go ahead so consider an aer aerobatic aircraft with a mass of 1500 kg diving with a velocity of 100 knots a if the aircraft pulls out of the dive with a radius of 150 meter determine the load factor so if you see here velocity is 100 knots load factor uh, radius r is equal to 150 meter so we have to find out n directly we can put on the equation we can get it if the maximum allowable load factor is 6 determine the minimum radius of the pull out of this so here we have the two types of problems so we, we, first one is very simple that is load factor n is equal to v square by rg plus 1 v is equal to 100 knots into 0 0.541 it is for the meter per second 100 into 0 0.541 whole square divided by r is equal to 150 g is equal to 9.81 plus 1 we will get n is equal to 2.98 this is the one answer we want to find out the minimum radius so r minimum is equal to v square by g n maximum minus 1 n maximum is given in the question is equal to 6 
speed is same that is the 100 knots. So if we put this value we will get v square by g and max minus 1. So 100 into 0 0.541 1 knot is equal to 0 0.541 meter per second. So this value we have put here. So 100 into 0 0.541 whole square divided by 9.81 into 6 minus 1 is equal to 54 meter. The minimum radius for this pull out is 54 meter. So this is the answer. Now okay, we will see the pull down. What is the meaning of pull down? So when aircraft is falling from top to bottom, it is called the pull down. So in this case, delta fx is equal to 0, t is equal to drag, it is in x direction forces and the vertical forces here in place of L minus because both are in the same direction. So if you see the first diagram, your aircraft is here. So here L and this is the W. So here L plus W cos gamma is equal to mv square by r. So here L plus W, if gamma is equal to small 0, cos 0 is equal to 1. So here L plus W is equal to mv square by r. So we can write omega is equal to v by r r is equal to v square by g n plus 1. So here this, this is cancelled. So g n, n plus 1 by v. We conclude that the load factor in a pull up maneuver is higher than that for a pull down maneuver with same radius and the same air speed. So here we can conclude that the load factor in a pull up maneuver is higher than the for a pull down maneuver with, with the same radius and the same air speed. The load factor of a pull up and a pull out is 2g greater than that of a pull down. So whatever it is going for the pull down, you add plus 2, then you will get the pull down. From the pull down you add 2, you will get the pull up. So n pull up minus n pull down is equal to v square by rg plus 1 minus v square by rg minus 1. So this, this is cancelled. So 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. So the difference between pull up minus pull down is 2. So this we have to remember here that if we add plus 2 to pull down, we get pull up or if pull up is given, pull up is given, add plus 2, you get the pull up manual. Now zero gravity flight, we will see in the space and all, we do not feel the gravity. In any kind of rotation, uh, such as in a turn, a type of acceleration called a radial or centripetal acceleration is generated. This acceleration can function similar to the Earth's gravity. The centripetal acceleration is a vector sometimes added to the gravity if they both are in the same direction. If they have opposite direction, they are subtracted from one another. As a vector, the centrifugal force is sometimes added to the weight and sometimes subtracted from it. In a vertical loop, the centrifugal force can cancel out the gravitational force at the top point of the loop. So if it is at the top point, both will be cancelled out. Two cases are presented here. One is orbital flight and another is a free fall cruise. So this we will be discussing that orbital flight and the free fall cruise. So here orbital flight we will see that a very famous case for weightlessness is the orbital flight by spacecraft. 
to the fact that his her weight downward is balanced by his her centrifugal force outward so downward force or weight is balanced by the output uh, centrifugal force so we can uh, see here that w is equal to fc is equal to mg m v square by r mm here we can cancel so this g is equal to v square r so whenever the combination of velocity and the radius satisfied above equation the weightlessness is felt so if you are in this g is equal to v square by r then you will not feel any weight weight will be negligible so it is called orbital flight free fall cruise if you see here that here if this is the th th thrust this is the drag and this is the weight and it is falling like this then what will happen this is called the free fall that uh, z will be down and x will be in this direction one practical case for the weightlessness that is the zero gravity in the air is a kind of cruising in fact descending flight see figure with the lift is set to be zero if the lift is zero and you are just descending then it is called the free fall cruise in the next lecture we will be discussing about flight envelope charts in conducting their flight operations vn diagram load factors maneuvering diagram vg diagram these are the references which i normally refer in a, a, everything is anderson jd aircraft performance and design international edition magra hills first edition 1999 SL by ME aircraft performance theory and practices AIA education series AIA any questions you are welcome to ask to my this email yd dwedi dwi vedi at the rate gmail dot com you can also like and subscribe and give the comment in the comment box please be tuned for my next lectures as per the about topics. Till then, goodbye. See you. Thank you very much. Like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.